Hello, welcome to our next poem, Palimpsis, by Johan de Lange. <clears throat> and uh, so it's quite a, it's a lovely poem. And as usual, what we'll do is get you some really cool notes here. That you That's all you need to know for this poem. Uh, the notes are quite dense and, and compact, so just learn everything in the notes. Uh, there's a little translation of the poem that I did myself. I hope it's right. And then there is the Afrikaans, the original version of, of the poem. Uh, just to remember, please support our books. If you struggle with Afrikaans, if you want to turn 70 to 80, um, if you have some issues with your writing or grammar, whatever it might be, Please go get our books at CNA stores countrywide. There's a variety there. Uh, page through them. This is the this is the, the the mother book, if I can put it that way, and the rest will will also help. But have a look there. For God's made simple at CNA. So going on with the poem. Uh, let's just check if we are recording. Yes, we are. Cool. So palimpsis uh, sounds. Very difficult, um, but there's quite a, 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 a difficult uh, metaphor that you need to understand for this poem. But I've got it down for you in a note, so there's not a problem there. Okay, so palimpsis. So let's just get through the translation, and then we'll discuss the meaning of the poem. Bome skryf teen die blau, krekellose lig. Okay, so trees write against teen the blue cloudless or creaseless like a crease that you would get in a shirt or an item of clothing creaseless sky so it's open sky so there's a tree the trees so just picture you just get the mental picture right here it's a uh, it's big trees that are there they they're going to be chopped down um and for wood and for paper so now these trees are moving the branches are moving you're looking up and the branches are moving against the sky, the backdrop of the blue sky. And they are writing. It's as if the branches are writing on the blue sky. They're writing something that nobody can understand. It's like they're speaking or writing their own language. Okay, so Boomer schrijft in die blau krekelose lucht. The lucht is the sky. There should be, there's a a break there but they use in moment okay so they flow they flow through like that okay it's gonna take it away um, so trees are writing against the blue creaseless sky things dunga what niemand can verstani but that nobody can understand okay so there's a language there's sort of a tree language there Clearly, obviously, personification, but we'll, we'll look at, I made notes for all of this, so don't write anything down now. Just, just sort of listen and get the mental picture first. Now, and there's a full stop. Okay, that full stop is important. Houtkappers um, come with baila, so these lumberjacks, these um, guys with their axes, they come and they fell the trees. Kap die boome af. Um, they chop them down. Okay, there's another full stop. Mulins. Now the trees obviously get transported to the to the sawmills, and they get sawed up and, and they get grinded down. These trees are meant for 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 paper. So is it blue gum trees that they use for paper? I think it is. Um, they use that for paper, so those big, tall blue gums. Okay. In pulp, in plet, the hout. So these, these sawmills are sawing, grinding, they're pulping, making the wood into a pulp. And plet is to sort of roll out and squeeze out the moisture from that pulp. So that pulp is that sort of mushy, sort of mache uh, type of effect. And then they and a plate the out then they roll out the wood. So it's the whole process being described of of how to make paper. Okay, and in the process 
the trees die. Okay, so trees die in order for us to get paper. Um, and there's an even greater goal in mind jail, as you'll see. And now it says, and there's a full stop again. Still a steep boomer. And then there's a semicolon. Uh, quiet are the trees. So now the trees are quiet. Boom. Now, interestingly, there's a double spacing here. There's a lot of space here. I put that in. That's not part of the poem. Uh, there's a lot of space here, and that is functional. That is this functional. Uh, we'll look at the note just now. It's obviously to emphasize the fact that the trees are gone, and it's quiet. You can't hear them rustling in the wind. You can't see them writing their own language on the skyline. Okay, so now we move from the trees. Now the paper has been manufactured. And in this stanza, now we have this writer writing, producing um, a written work on this paper, being creative on this paper. So still, so there's a repetition of the word still. See there and there. Okay, obviously meaningful. There is a note on that. So quiet, neck taut, but unnet just until. So this, these trees are being transformed. They're only quiet. Net taut hay. Now who's the hay? Oh, I didn't take a note on that. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put that there to remind myself. <clears throat> so who is the hay? The hay is the scraver. Okay, I'm just gonna. Clatterant, clattering, that sort of uh, typewriter, that distinctive typewriter noise. We're not talking about a key, a computer keyboard, yeah? Old style, old school typewriter. Okay, so there's two clues that tells us that we're dealing with, um, not with modern time, yeah? It's, a, it's, a, it's in history. Um, it's when they, it's, it's because they use axes. Okay, um, and they also is a tech machine. I'm just gonna put that in there for later. Don't worry about it now. If I can just spell the bloody word, tech machine. Um, it tells us that what's going on here now? I'm frozen here. Okay, it tells us that we're dealing with the time long ago. So clitterant. Onomatopoeia, clunk knob, with some nice word there. Uh, clatter and clattering. Let's say tick machine with his typewriter. Out self the so out of the finest grains of paper. So, so, so high quality paper. So the paper that you would get your note, print your notes on the white paper that we use, like uh, what's it, Mondi or whatever uh, paper. It's a quality paper. You can't see anything that looks like a tree in paper. So it's very fine. So he's, he's, he's typing, he's getting meaning out of the finest grains. It's almost, yeah, and this is where the poem gets a little bit tricky. It's almost as if the writer is translating those things the tree were write, trees were writing on the skyline, on the blue sky, so it's things that nobody could understand. Now that the trees are wood, it's as if the writer is translating what those trees were writing on the sky. They're, he's extracting meaning from, from the trees and, the, and their stories that they had to tell. Um, but we'll, there is a note on that. I just I simplify it right down for you, so don't stress. But just so you have the, the broader understanding there. The yellow gamma van die woord. He has to use the whole gamma. The whole gamma. He, he has to use the whole alphabet. Every single letter. And all the possible combinations of the letters of the alphabet. There are millions of possible combina combinations. He has to use the whole alphabet. They, they use that Greek, that Greek word there. Um, 
to describe to what extent the um, the writer must use the alphabet to ex to to explain the stories, the language of the trees. It's a, it's actually, it's a beautiful metaphor. In pain, ring or bring, the, the 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 experience of the trees. Every ring, every ring of the tree represents a a season's growth. Okay, but also the some rings are wider, some are a bit skew. Those things document the experiences and the pain that the tree has gone through. Much like humans go through, we go through pain, we go through stages in our life, year by year. If we had rings, as it were, like a tree, those rings would tell stories, um, as I'm sure you'll understand. So the, he uses the whole alphabet to um, write about the, the pain Ring op ring, dier hier die ochend laat dein. So with his typing machine, he lets the the words dein is to like um, die rook dein in die lucht op. Smoke blows, it blows up the up the sky. It is the smoke sort of going up in a column into the sky. So his message is words. Um, go onto the paper, but they also go back into the sky. Where did the trees write their um, words? They wrote it in the sky as well. So it ties the poem together nicely. So that's a actually that's a quite a deep um, meaning of the poem. I don't think they'll go that quite that deep, but you never know. But what I've done is I've made some nice simple notes for you. J just learn that. And I'm sure uh, that'll be fine. I'm sure that you'll get everything covered and get the marks that you need. Okay. All right. So it's basically the writer translating the message of the trees that that were turned into words. So the trees were destroyed so that their message could be figured out or deciphered by the writer. That's the... That's the deepest punch of the poem, I think. But but here are the notes, so <clears throat> don't stress about that too much. So the title, very unusual title, of course. Um, let's use green here. Yeah. I'm just going to quickly clean, clean this up. Um, You see that the title is unique. Olympsis. I do not know what this thing is. I had to read um, read up. It's also known as a pergament. So that's just a, a, a synonym. Okay. Palimpsis or pergament. Basically what it was, it's like an old manuscript. So it was typically made out of animal skin. Um, so you could write and rewrite on it. So it's like a old whiteboard sort of effect where you could write text on it and then rub it out using I don't know what but rub, rub it out and then rewrite on that thing remember they didn't have paper back then okay so um, you, you couldn't just write anywhere so to, to practice writing or to I don't know what, what they would use it for but you write on it and then they would rub it out and write again um, so this is the if they ask something about this, this is this is what it is. Is he blood safe on a manuscript? So it's the page of some kind of manuscript where van die text afgeskraap of afgewas is. So, so it's a page of a manuscript where the text is scraped off um, with something or washed off, okay? So that so that iemand weer daarop kan skryf, so that someone can write on it again, okay? So I said that it's just a clean wit board, it's like a little whiteboard effect or chalkboard effect, but you can off here that you can rub off and write on again. That is it. That's simply what it means. Okay, so how does this relate to the poem? That's the tricky, that's the tricky, um, the tricky part. If they ask something about how the, the, the title fits in with the message of the poem, 
and there's so many ways they could phrase that question, I suppose. But the title gives us the key to the meaning of the poem. This, that's what I say there. The title here, the sleutel, taught the um, tekenis van die gedig. It gives us a key to the meaning of the poem. Um, so the so the, the the writing of the trees in its essence gets rubbed off and replaced by something that makes sense, something that's written by a person, so that we can understand it. And this must be some kind of special writer because you can understand what the trees were were scribbling on the sky. Okay. Yeah, I hope. Yeah, check with your teacher. This is a tricky one. The the bome se sinnelose onverstaanbare geskryf word uitgeveer. Okay, so this is how it links to the poem. The tree is uh, sinnelose, sort of meaningless. Sinnelose. Onverstaanbare. Uh, uh, um, you can't, un, um, incomprehensible. Can't understand it. Onverstaanbare. Ununderstandable. Okay. Word uitgeveer. It gets what? Clean. Just like you would on a palimpsis, on a little whiteboard. The schrijver gee betekenis aan die taal van die boom. The writer then gives meaning to the language of the tree. So there, there's the tree writing. Here's the writer writing. But what is he writing? Well, he's, he's writing what the trees were saying. Or what they were um, writing on the sky. So it links then to our theme. Our theme is then skeppen kom uit vernietiging. Often uh, creation comes out of destruction. Okay, so creativity comes out of um, destruction. Something that's sort of idea of the phoenix rising out of the ash. Something has to be destroyed before something new can be created. So the trees have to be destroyed so that they can be paper so that the writer can write. Okay, so it starts off with the with personification. Look there. Boom is die in die blauw lig. So there. Trees write. Personificatie. Um, there's this debilt, there's this um, image of branches that write against the blue sky. Bome wat teen die takke van blauw lig skryf. But then it says, niemand kan het verstaan nie. Nobody can understand what they're writing. Niemand, kan, no, niemand verstaan hulle taal nie. Nobody understands their language. Look at the enjambement there. See there it flows there that should typically be there but it's dropped um that's too it's, it's sort of a number meant it makes it flow it um brings a smoothness to the poem the way it reads it also fits in what i the notes i took here if there are something about that just say this the possibility vich the swaying of the branches in the wind the enyamba meant it, it fits in with that mental picture of the swaying, vigus to sway, swaying for a an event. Okay? Krekel Lewis, creaseless. Something is, when something is ironed out, it doesn't have any more, it's not creased anymore. So, krekel Lewis, there's geen vouwe in krekels nie. So, it's a goeie palimpsis, it's like a good Palimpsis is a good uh, so that, that thing that you write on. It's nice and clean. So it refers to the Krekelose Lug. So it's, it's a it's a Volklose Dach. It's it's bright, it's cloudless sky. Die Lug soos die perkament van die, bo van die bome. So the air there, the, the sky, not the air, the, the sky is like the it's just it's like that perkament, like that palimpsis. The sky is there, and the branches right on the sky. Okay, makes sense. Now, the the houtkappers come. 
these uh, lumberjacks. They come with their axes. That's they symbolize destruction, but it's a necessary destruction. Okay. I say that toch is hulle nodig. They are necessary. They are needed. Nodig. For the writer to have paper. Otherwise, how must he write? Or how must he type? Then there's the, uh, just a mention of the, the axes. It's not a chainsaw. So it gives us the time context. That's the one thing. The other thing, so the baler and the tick machine, those are the two things that tell us we're dealing with long ago, long gelede. Uh, maybe I'm just say that there. Long gelede. Um, it's not recent. Okay. Uh, Baal is, uh, so we've got a nice, uh, not too important, but I just said the, the, the axe is quite a crude instrument in contrast with the writer's typing machine, which is quite a subtle, well-designed sort of piece of machinery. So the axe is quite cre crude, and the typing machine is, uh, typewriter is sort of more subtle. Okay, fell the Boomer. Um, all right, so they fell the trees, they, and then there's a full stop. So that means death and destruction. The first rail ends with a punt. The line ends with a full stop. Why? They could ask something, eh? They could ask that. Um, it will be a, a, a fair question. They could do that. The beklem to the end of the boom and the begin of the skipping process. So if you say that, man, you're just going to get the marks, I promise you. Um, it emphasizes the end of the trees, the death of the trees, and the start of the creative process. That's what that full stop does. Then uh, there's a lot of asunansi and alliteracy, which is... Um, I, hope, I always hope they don't ask that. But it, it just, if you if they ask something, just say, it passed by the rhythmische klanke van out wat gekap word. It, so that assonance and the alliteration fits in with the, the rhythmic sounds of the wood that is being chopped. Okay. That's your, you'll get your marks. Uh, what is pulp? Um, pulp and plate. Well, pulp is that's that watery sort of um, mush, waterige papperij. Uh, plate is when they roll out that, start rolling out that um, fog, fog is moisture. Eh? And that's how they start creating paper. So the first thing they create is paper, and then the second thing that gets created is the, the text, the write, the actual writing. So there they now there's this this emphasis of the quietness of the trees. Boom is still there. All the space emphasizes that the trees are quiet. There is another repetition. The same word is used twice. Alle skryf nie meer nie. The trees don't write anymore. They are dead. Herhaling van still. Very important. So You've got to know this because they will ask this. Um, the beklem to the stilte van die boom, boma, let's say boma rather. It's not just one tree. Then there's that double space. The double space it is in the strophes, behold the stilte. It, behold the stilte, it captures that silence. And fang the stilte in leegte fas. It, it catches, it fang fas is, it, it, um, captures the the silence and the lichter is the emptiness. Okay. Then there's also the semicolon that indicates the the shift in the poem. The shift from uh, what shift? Okay. What shift? What is the shift? What's the difference between these two stanzas? Well, this one is about distraction. This one is about creation. Okay. Creativity, producing something, not destroying something. The irony, of course, is that something has to be destroyed 
to to create and that is the theme got a note on that don't worry about that so what's the difference there's the semicolon definite is klaar die skepping begin it's interesting so, uh, so sorry um destruction is finished and the creation or the creative work is starting then that hey um the hey is of course refers to the writer okay Kletterend. i'm just going to move this poem down so we can see a bit better here yeah? put it there so hey is the, the scriver I'll take that out now we don't we know there's a double space so that hey there is the is the writer yeah? there. Kletterend, nice word. So it's klank na bootsing, ander met die pia. Van die skryverse tuk machine. Ok, is the, uh, the typewriter. It's the sound of the typewriter. Alright. Uh, so there's a lot of sort of sound words here in this poem. Uh, we can also imagine the chopping of the wood. We could also be kletterend. Net tot hy kletter het met sy tuk machine. Interesting. Okay, so he's writing with a typewriter. This is the interesting line. A die feinste grein. He gets his um, he gets his his words. He lets gets his ideas out of the finest grains of the paper. So firstly, it's a quality. So look at it's a quality paper. It's very fine grain. It's not like a uh, like those what those recycled um, that recycled paper. It's soft brown paper. Um, it also shows that the writer is tapping into the deepest stories from the deepest parts of the tree, the gr very grains of, of the pulp. He's going to tap the deepest stories. He taps into the deepest stories of the tree's deepest parts i think that's what it means there okay it's a difficult line the hele gamma van die woord it sounds fancy it just means the whole alphabet every letter it's just a greek term it could mean a few things but yeah it means the alphabet okay you need to you need to really employ or tap into the alphabet to make sense of what the trees are, are, are writing so i said that there's your note it said the schrijver moet all sy vaardigheid gebruik the author must or the writer must use all his skill om die boomse taal te vertaal to Vertaal is translate, to translate the tree's language. And, in die boom te laat herleef, and to let the tree live again, by means of his writing. So that's an important note there. I know it's a tricky one, but you can't really get away from it, unfortunately. <clears throat> okay, so let's just go through that again, in case you missed it. So, the schrijver, the writer, must use all his vaardigheid, skill, gebruik, use, om die boom, the tree's language, taal, te vertaal, translate, in die boom te laat, herleef, and to let the tree live again, dier middel van, by means of, his writing. Okay. Then it talks about the, um, Putting the, the the pain of the tree into language, ring by ring, the pain of every ring, the pain of every season, the pain of every year. Um, yeah. So it means that the tree was very old. The boom was by out and it by him to foretell. So this tree was old. Uh, it has lots to tell. Um, you can say by a pain, uh, net, source, means uh, people also experience a lot of pain. The means any natiersche pain, there it is. 
uh, ring op ring kan ook die op die schrijver wat roek het kan ons sê, I was just thinking the rings can also indicate the, 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 the writer may be smoking um, and also can also refer to his ideas that are floating into the floating into the blue sky okay that word Dane means um, gaan op in die licht. it goes up in the air it billows up like like smoke so his, his he, even though he's typing his message is, is going like smoke up into the up into the sky like that okay so just like the tree the tree's message yeah remember he was the tree they were writing in the trees were writing in the sky okay Whew. yeah so the, the those rings refer to the the pain of the of the tree the writing the experience of the tree I'm just gonna cut that if I can cut that out and rather make it a separate note for you there makes more sense so eh? okay okay so ring op ring die boom was baie oud it was very old and has many stories to tell it has lots of pain just like people so if you write that you're gonna get your marks you'll be fine if they ask something about the rings it's the it's the growth ring so eh? um i'm just gonna put there in brackets the groei ringe van die boom it's the growth rings of the tree okay <clears throat> elke jaar se groei let's just put that in cover all our bases yeah elke jaar se groei okay Dane, okay, that word Dane, the verb is extended right to the end of the poem. Um, it's postponed right to the end of the poem, the verb. Okay, that's just to um, to create a good, a nice climax there of the central idea. Okay, so we're almost done. The theme here. Uh, Yeah, we're going on too long here. So the theme, sorry, uh, soms is vernietiging en dood nodig om weer te skep en te herleef. Sometimes destruction and death are needed to create and to relive. That's the theme. If they ask the theme, that's the theme. Um, you can add something. You can say, schrijvers bevoor dinge wat ander nie altyd verstaan nie. Okay. Writers can sometimes put into words, bewoord. They can state something in words that other people really can't or they can't understand. Alle, um, alle verander die onverstaanbare na die verstaanbare. They change the, the something you can't understand to something that you can understand, to the understandable incomprehensible to the understandable first stanza couldn't understand the trees language second stanza now you can understand the trees language there's no real rhyme it can just show that the if they are something about the fact that there's no rhyme well the, the the language of the trees are complex and the job of the writer is difficult the build there almost an italian sonnet but it's not quite octave and it's a state um, strophe 1 is the, un, the incomprehensible, the strophe 2 is the understandable. Alright, so a tricky poem, not, not, not easy, but as I say, learn the notes and, and simplify it down, to, down as much as you can. I don't think they're going to really ask too much, go too much in depth here, as long as you understand the, the mental picture that's being painted here, of the trees dropped down, paper being made. And then the writer decoding this message of the trees and it goes into the sky like smoke. Okay. Hope that helps. Um, almost done with all your poems now. And uh, good luck with that one. We chat soon.
please support our box. Afrikaans made simple. Signing off. Bye-bye.